Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in and coming back and watching. I appreciate it. Hope you're doing well, staying safe, taking care of yourselves, all those kind of things. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. Great to meet you. Thanks for stopping by. I make tutorial videos here every week showing you how I edit my photos using various software products. Today, I'm in Luminar AI, still in beta, but coming December 15th, as you probably know. Uh, so you're going to get it real soon. I'm continuing to walk through, play with different photos, do things, have fun, experiment, and share my findings here. I'm hoping that it's helpful. I'm hoping that it provides some sort of inspiration for you once you get the product. And of course, I hope that it provides some guidance for you if you're new to the product and uh, trying to get used to it, come to grips with it, whatever expression you want to use. I've got a photo right here that I took in Wales uh, a year ago, back when I could get on airplanes and go places. And uh, I want to turn it into something a bit more interesting and different and fun and beautiful and dramatic and whatever. So uh, I'm going to get started. The only thing I've done is use the erase tool and I erased a spot in the sky. But other than that, no cropping or anything else. Um, I actually I actually think it's kind of straight. It's hard for me to tell. I honestly straighten just about every photo because I feel like my neck must be on, my head must be on crooked or something. Anyway, um, I think it's straight. I don't know. Anyway, what I normally do is start with the light tool. But in this case, I'm actually going to start with Enhanced AI and go into Accent AI. And I'm just going to go to 100. And like, what, what a difference, right? Now, Accent AI is not new to Luminar AI. It's been in previous versions of Luminar. But I mean, that you, you could be done, to be honest. It, it just kind of depends on what you want to do with the photo. But if you're new to photo editing, you could get Luminar AI, drag Accent AI to the right on many, if not all of your photos, and really have some beautiful, beautiful shots. In fact, out of all the photo editing tools that I have, which believe me, there's quite a few of them, this might be the best slider in any tool. Um, it's that good. So I love it. I use it all the time. Anyway, so there I am. I've, I've actually got a great looking photo. Now I'm going to go over to light and here's where I kind of play around with things. And I've got to look a little bit at my notes. I'm going to go a little cooler because I want to cool that off because it's just what I like to do. Uh, something about like that. And then contrast goes up. Let's see here. I'm going into 67 or so. So something about like that. Uh, and I'm going to bring up shadows. So shadows are going to come up as well to about mid 50s, something like that. Now it's very saturated, but if you saw the uh, like header image or whatever you call it, you know I'm going to turn this into a monochrome. So don't worry about saturating your photo heavily if you're going to convert it to monochrome because it doesn't matter. And in fact, I think in many ways it actually helps the black and white photos look better. Again, my two cents. I'm going to add a little bit of structure. So like a 25, 27, 28. I'm applying that across the entire photo. I'm good with it there. And now I'm going to come into black and white and hit convert. And I think I've got a nice looking photo, but there are some things I want to do. I'm on the luminance tab. You've got two here, luminance and saturation for monochromes. Let me turn off black and white. Oops. Uh, let me click that. There you go. Notice the dominant colors, blue in the sky and the foreground. You're going to see green, but there's a lot of yellow. Uh, the yellow and the green really go together and they blend a lot. And when you see a lot of green, you can often adjust the yellow and it will impact the green. So just keep that in mind. What I'm going to do here is play with the luminance, which is the brightness level. So I'm going to take the yellow down of like a negative 35 or something. And you can see what that's doing is creating a little bit more darkness in the foreground. I'm going to bring the greens down a lot, like 75, 77, something like that. Again, darkening that foreground. I'm creating a little bit more of a contrasty photo. And the blues were pretty uh, prominent as well in the sky. I'm going to bring that down, something about like a negative 65. So I turned it black and white, and then I created a darker, moodier image by adjusting the light levels of the dominant colors in the image. Now I'm going to go to details, and I'm going to pull medium details up, like 40 or 50, something about like that. And here I'm going to grab the mask, and I'm going to click on gradient mask. And all I want to do is drag this gradient mask into the foreground. All I'm doing is applying those details across the foreground. If I hit the forward slash key, you can see how my mask is applying and I can move this around if I need to and make some adjustments to it, but I'm pretty fine with it there. So I'm going to close the masking tool and basically all I did was pop the detail in the foreground of the photo. Okay, I think I'm finished with this tab. I'm going to go on to the creative tab. I'm going to get atmosphere AI and what I want to get is layered fog and I'm going to go to about a 55, 57, something about like that. And if you look at right over here, kind of in the center, kind of the horizon, for lack of a better word, of the image, let me turn that off. You can see it's a little bit darker. And now when I turn it back on, you can see it's a little bit brighter. And that's what layered fog does. It's just coming in as a kind of a thin strip, kind of along that horizon line. 
and I like it because it's basically offsetting some of that contrast. There you go, really dark before I added it, and now a little bit brighter, which I think contrasts nicely with this right side where there's a lot of rock, and it also, to me, it kind of makes sense. You might have a little bit of layered mist or fog coming in off of the sea there, just because of uh, you know wind, weather, and things like that at the seashore. Okay, now I'm going to my favorite trick. If you've seen me do monochromes before, you know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use split toning. They just call it toning now, but it's called split toning historically. And in highlights, I'm gonna drag saturation to about 15, but I don't want it red. I'm gonna make the uh, hue kind of blue. And I'm gonna do the same thing in the shadows. I'm gonna do about a 10 or 12 here and about a 230 or so. I usually hang out around the 230 range um, and then a low saturation level like you know, 12, 15, something like that. All I'm doing here is adding a little bit of blue into both the highlights and the shadows. And because it's a light amount, it gives it a little bit of a silver cast. I just like that, it's personal preference. By all means, this is not a required step. In fact, none of these are required steps. This is art. I'm just having fun. I hope it gives you some ideas on things you can do with your own art. But if I turn this off, you'll see it's a traditional monochrome or a traditional black and white. And now it's a little bit silver. Just something I like, something I do with all my monochromes. Now I'm going to pop over to Mystical and do a light amount there, just a light touch, like 25, 27. You can see what that does. It softens up the picture a little bit. It creates a little bit of contrast. The bright parts get a little bit brighter. The darker parts get a little bit darker. So if I turn that off, it's almost like I flop the light around a little bit where um, you know it becomes, let me turn it back on. You can see it becomes a little bit brighter in the sky, a little bit darker in the foreground. It's just a nice little bit of mood to add to the photo that I think helped accentuate the look that I'm going for. And now one more little trick. I'm going to go over here to the portrait tab and go to high key. And I'm going to give a high key of about 30. But um, once again, I don't want to apply that across the whole photo. So I'm going to use a gradient mask. And I'll click on that. And once again, just drag it here into the foreground with the gradient mask. Gradient mask is a great way to just cover a, a kind of a wide swath of an image. And if I hit the forward slash key, you can see what my mask looks like. All I'm doing is popping a little bit of that foreground. If I turn that off, you can see it was a little bit darker before I did this move, and now it's a little bit brighter. I just didn't want it to get too dark because the foreground's closer to me, and I don't want it to be overly dark because it, it's not an evening shot. I want it to be a little bit brighter. I think that helps lead the viewer eye into the photo. My eye kind of goes on that path, and obviously I'm drawn to the, I think that's an Irish or Celtic cross. I'm not exactly sure but I'll call it a Celtic cross. Somebody please correct me. Let me know down below um, if you know, but I call that a Celtic cross or like an Irish cross, but um, that Celtic cross, I'm kind of drawn to that and that pathway leads me to the ocean, but I want the foreground to be bright enough that I'm not losing visibility. And there's one more thing that you can do here, and that is dodge and burn, where maybe you come in with uh, a brush and a low strength, uh, and you could come in here and just, and I haven't done this, so I don't know how well I'm gonna do it while I'm, doing this live, but I'm brightening this path a little bit. And all I'm doing is just creating a little bit more visibility into the path that I want to lead the viewer's eye down. I need to adjust my brush size and add a little bit there. Um, and there you go. So if I turn this off, if you look at the before, the path is a little bit darker and the after, you can see that the path is a little bit lighter. Um, that's just a fun way to draw the viewer's eye into a, a particular part of the photo. Your eye, of course, is drawn to the brighter parts or the more colorful parts. No color here, of course, but the bright parts I want to dry, draw the viewer's eye to. And that's uh, you know, what I would call, it's a little bit of a moody monochrome. I don't know if I'd call it dramatic. I mean, it's kind of dramatic. You know, it's a, it's a cross on a rock outcropping next to a sea with stormy skies. So you could call it dramatic, but it's not overly dramatic. And I did not process it in a way to really accentuate the drama, but I definitely wanted to have some mood. So call it whatever you will. But if you look at the before and after, I mean, we came a long way from that base image, a little too dark. I mean, not bad colors, to be honest. And I liked it as a color image, to be clear, but I wanted to go kind of moody and monochrome here. But, you know, we came a long way from that base image to this one. Another idea might be to lighten a little bit of that cross with Dodge and Burn if you wanted to. I kind of like it being dark because I think it stands out really nicely against that sky, which is quite a bit lighter. But the truth is you have millions of things you could do um, and to each his own, right? Go have fun with your photos and do whatever it is you want to do to them. But I think we're able to come in a short time 
come a really long way. Once again, from that to that, and if I do the sliding window to compare the before and after, you can see that we've made quite an impact. Details are up, uh, contrast is up. Obviously, we created it as a monochrome with a little bit of a blue silvery tint, more of a silver tint. Um, and I think we had a little bit of mood and drama. I love it. It's just a, it's a fun photo, and I'm really enjoying doing monochromes. Super quick, super easy. That's Luminar AI. Hope it gives you some ideas, my friends. Thanks for watching. I'll see you really soon. You guys take care of yourselves, and adios.